We are not alone. You are watching Contact TV with your hosts, Leslie Mitchell Clark and Wes Roberts. Exploring ufology, metaphysics, and beyond with the world's foremost experts. And a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whenever you are tuning in or listening to us. This is Contact TV. Enjoying our 12th season. I am here, Leslie Mitchell Clark, or you may use my uh, my preferred, uh, what is it we, we say? Our preferred, uh, um, anyway. Non I I, yeah, so I, I, I prefer she, her, or your coolness. So either any, <laughs> of, any of those. Personal my personal pronouns. pronouns, my favorite ones are she, her, and of course, queen of coolness or whatever you want to say anyway i'm back i'm not that cool but i am here and so is wes roberts as always my Hello. first wild co-host how are you doing this uh this evening morning afternoon wes oh this afternoon for me i'm doing uh really well we've been trying to get our guest on for some time and we finally made it click even though we're Yay. not all 100 percent feeling great but let's go Yes, and uh, we are so thrilled to finally uh, be welcoming to Contact TV Stan Mallow, a fellow New Yorker like myself. And uh, many of you probably remember Stan Mallow. He was the host of the Paranormal Show, and I used to watch that. It, it aired weekly on uh, TV uh, Kojiko in Canada. And amongst the hundreds of guests who came on that show to promote their books, movies, workshops, tours, organizations, services, and other endeavors were several heavyweights in the paranormal world. And that includes uh, George Norrie, host of Coast to Coast. Was that before his toupee or after, Stan? You can tell me later. Okay, so it was George Norrie um, and uh, Patricia Corey and the renowned mentalist, the amazing Kreskin. Boy, mm, did I remember I him. him. Yeah, yeah, he was very proud of his Canadian origins in that. Yes. Even though he's not from Canada, he had a show in Ottawa that he was telling me about. And that's how he became famous. So, so he likes Canada a lot. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Well, since about 2020, um, Stan has been the host of Paranormal Yacker. I love that. Can we talk? Sure. Paranormal <laughs> Yacker. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Coffee talk, uh, Paranormal <laughs> Yacker, <laughs> which is a uh, YouTube series that has gained loyal international following. And each weekly episode finds him yakking with a different person of note in their respective field. And this, as always, includes an eclectic mix of authors of books that are on Amazon and New York Times bestseller lists. And if it is connected to the weird, arcane, unexplained, mysterious, bizarre, and macabre, you will find it on Paranormal Yacker. So we are absolutely thrilled to have our good colleague and friend, Stan Mallow, joining us on Contact TV. Welcome, Stan, and thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Oh, my absolute pleasure. I love it. Love the two of you. And just seeing the two of you now and speak with you. Remember, I remember when I first met the two of you. Uh, MUFON had an expo in Toronto a few years ago. Yes. yes. And hey. Sunday morning, the Experiences Workshop, I sat in it and I was... Oh, I, oh that's when I said, these two people are incredible. Oh, oh, Stan, of course. I remember you. Well, we were sitting I, I, at the know, table. I, I knew yeah. that we had met before, but I just, yeah. I, I, you know, I... I wasn't able to place it because, uh, but that is fabulous. Well, it's it's so wonderful that you're here, and um, you have had such a career. Uh, and oh, yeah. and I have to mention, not only in the paranormal field, but you were at one time a absolutely top uh, flack, as we call them. You're an absolutely top uh, publicist and working with all kinds of major celebrities, as well as uh, with uh, the top top. Broadway shows of the day. So you have a massive uh, show business experience. And I'm, I'm sure it's that ease with people that developed in that magnificent career that probably helps with your with your program and makes everybody feel comfortable and uh, and gets them to uh, to elicit all kinds of interesting information. 
Well, like the two of you, I'm interested in people and what's in back. That's why, like when I was in the university, I loved being in the back when they were putting on performances. Being on the stage wasn't that much for me, but getting people to come to the stage, that was it. And that's where the Broadway theater was very good for me too there. When something like, you, well, you know, Leslie, you have show business background too, that when uh, something could open to mixed reviews, it's not necessarily going to be a flop with the right marketing, uh, public relations, things like that. Boom. It could be there. So, yes, I always love it. And like the two of you, I, I love each guest has something else to say and that they open up about it. And that's what going back to when I first saw the two of you, when I heard Wes talking about what happened and sharing it with you and everything, I says, wow, these are people I want to know. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Now, you're involved in all kinds of uh, different areas of, I would say, high strangeness and metaphysics. What do you think is one of the most exciting areas of research in the paranormal that's going on right now or discovery or whatever you are really excited about that seems to be happening or occurring? What, what would that be for you, Stan? That's a great question which i really haven't thought about but as we speak obviously rest a question you deserve an answer so <laughs> i'm going to uh do that okay i i see things that we didn't speak about before but well, one of course ufos that is one thing ufos and more people like wes opening up i think thanks to wes and the book the two of you wrote together on that more people are opening up so i think there's a lot more to going on related to that area that we are not alone. Also, more and more people, I think, is wonderful at taking things into their own. When whatever the belief system they were brought up with, if they are questioning things and looking, uh, you know, like a Peggy Lee song, you know, is that all there is? Well, no, that's not all that there is. There's more. So I, I think what's on the horizon also is people discovering themselves. Because so many people, I think, I put a blockade on themselves because they were afraid to go forward what they might see what might be there what people might say so I, I think the whole world is opening up right now but i think with the ufo phenomena and that passing over to the other side is not necessarily what we think it was or we we're brought up to think about it there's more out there and i believe everybody is going to realize somewhere along the way, they're going to come to the conclusion that's right for them. Because uh, Shakespeare said to thine own self, be true. I believe there's validity in that. So what this future is going to hold out? Everything, the paranormal, science fiction, all of these things there, it's becoming real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Stan, you know, I think that uh, it's very safe to say that there are far more experiencers than anyone had oh. ever imagined. I mean, just by reports, you know, just by MUFON's reports from a few years ago, there was uh, 14 million people who who had had some sort of experience. That's 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 the size of New York City, or maybe even a bit bigger. So, and some of the current estimates say that three quarters of the individuals on this planet have had some type of contact. And um, I know we've discussed this many times, but um, have you found, Stan, I mean, I don't know, in, in my work as a hypnotherapist, my work with Wes, you know, I find that most experiences, I'm, you know, upwards of 80%, are positive experiences. Mm -hmm. Have Have you how are you how would you track that would you tend to agree or have you heard some negative things or i have going? heard good good question yes i have heard some negative things but i would say also 80 90 percent uh of the people there if not initially positive what they thought was a negative they were afraid of in retrospect, years down the line, they realized, no, this was good. There was a reason for mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. at the, I don't know if you found the same thing, too. But mm -hmm. at the beginning, a lot of the people who were taken aback and saying, oh, my God, you know, this, why me? What's happening? And they say, oh, I'm glad it was me. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd probably agree. We're finding that there, there are a lot of aspects of choice. Uh, you know, many experiencers 
will recall ultimately under regression that they are purposefully here mm -hmm. to uh, work with ETs and to help bring about a, um, a lightening of our vibrations so that we can hopefully move to the next kind of level in a more, in a, a more decent, humane, kind type of world that, that most of us want, I believe. Yes, and also talking about um, uh, the experiences, it seems it's also some sort of commonality related to the messages uh, that the alien beings are passing on for them to pass on to us, to general mankind, that we've got to get our act together. Mm-hmm. Oh, we do. I, I think that's uh, those kinds of messages are coming through just as they did in the, the 50s to Betty and Barney Hill. The Zeta Reticulites told Betty and Barney Hill, you got to deal with the environment. Things are getting critical. So some of these messages are th these caring for Earth. It's like if we can't care for Earth, you know, my God, we have no business, you know, being out and about possibly screwing up other planets. <laughs> you know, really, oh, we can't get it we can't get it right and i'm already concerned about the incursions that have been made through you know i i believe there are secret government programs and yes, there, things are not at all what we what they seem that we have the we have the facade nasa and we have what's really going on um so it's uh it's very concerning that malintentioned individuals who are vibrating at a low spiritual level might have some sort of say in disclosure you know it's 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 very concerning wes what what do you think um where do you plot the progress now of disclosure do you feel positive are you feeling frustrated uh, do you feel that there's a timeline that we are either screwing up or adhering to what are your thoughts on this I quite honestly, and thank you for that, I, I feel we are being drip fed information. Mm -hmm. um, small little pieces from the military industrial complex. I know it's not called that anymore. Uh, that's old school, but small bits and pieces from the military and the government and some of the black ops. And then in popular movies, for sure, I think we're being introduced to some things, mm -hmm. one little baby step at a time. Um, I think the time might come soon, especially if things escalate uh, in terms of the current incursions. You were speaking of incursions. If mm -hmm. things escalate over there, maybe we'll actually see the light of day in the sense of a, a broad scale acknowledgement mm -hmm. of what's going on. I, I really hope for that because, you know, I'm sitting here thinking as a fellow citizen of this planet, of this species, um, would there be a time for another, another species or race to step in? Hmm. You know, and, and that that comes to my mind in terms of what's going on with disclosure. Will there be a time when they'll just step in anyway, regardless mm -hmm. of what the military wants or needs? Yes, like we've been. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Stan. No, no, you go right ahead. I, I was just saying, yes, like naughty children who've been given mm -hmm. a time and 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 uh, couldn't get it together. And so back to the drawing board. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> It's it's yeah. it's it could happen. I mean, we're uh, um, the human race has been rebooted several times already, and we have as a as a species we have archaeological amnesia. We don't understand <laughs> our we don't understand our own our own history. So we're in this loop of military aggression and other stuff, and we can't even remember how futile all these things are, really. Right. It might just be out of necessity that the government is going to have to say something because we have to remember when we do things that are not good for our planet and our people on it, there are people in other areas outside of our planet and we're starting to affect them. So it's going to get to the point if we don't get our act together on Mother Earth over here, they are going to be coming in at a necessity to themselves. And then all the governments are covering things up. They can't say, well, oh, you know, we were just kidding when we really didn't mean it. It is going to be there. That's what I feel is going to happen. And like Wes, I agree, it's going to be sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. I think within our within our lifetimes, 
to be sure. Otherwise, we wouldn't all be here right now because I believe, yeah. Stan, you, I believe all of us are here with, with purposeful intent to help humanity in any way that we can. Uh, to, and a big way to do that, I think, is to um, uh, banish fear. And, and by talking to people on shows who, you know, have knowledge and expertise in a wide variety of areas, knowledge also di always dissipates fear. Knowledge sure. always dissipates fear. I mean, look at the fundamental, well, I, I, I'm going to tread carefully here. I don't want to offend anyone's faith, but I do not believe in a God that rules with fear. I do with not. You. I don't believe in it now. I didn't, I wouldn't, I think the, the fearful God of the old Testament was, was a simply a more advanced humanoid that was uh, into control. I, I don't believe a God who rules with fear. I believe it is a universe of love and free will. Agree really. totally. And to quote uh, president uh, Roosevelt, there is nothing to fear, but fear itself. And there is validity in that, Totally. And, and regretfully, you talk about religious and not to step on anybody or go anything like that. The way things originally were, the way how they were interpreted by people who made certain changes for their own purpose, that purpose, of course, being control. Mm -hmm. You know, if you tell somebody, you know, if you don't, you know, if you don't hand over your wallet, I'm going to knife you. That's equivalent to the thing. Of, well, if you don't do this or that, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to burn forever and who knows where? Uh, so, yes, I, I agree with what you're saying. I believe if there is a God and there is a higher being, I do believe that. But it's love, not hate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. We just have to, 52, 51% of us have to be like-minded. And then, and I think that may have already occurred. I think the balance is shifting. And, and that also includes a balance of human equity. Women have been disenfranchised. Um, uh, people who express themselves um, and their gender in different ways have been disenfranchised. Um, all of that must stop. All of it has to stop immediately. And, uh, you know, it's interesting in the early, in the early Catholic church, which had a lot of pagan stuff in it still cycling around, circling around, they had, um, a special mass, a special ceremony for same-sex marriage. Way back in the year one, in the very beginnings, very first utterings of the Christian church before the Council of Nicaea. And I like to think that that was a reflection of, if you want to think of Jesus as a divine being or an enlightened being, that was probably one of the most true reflections of his message. Love. The rest of it. Love thy neighbor, not hate you know, thy neighbor. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Absolutely. So um so I think we feel pretty positive. Um, Stan, I was wondering, have you um had anyone on your program who has been discussing uh what's going on in Antarctica as far as the discovery of the Black Pyramid and goodness knows what else is going on there? We we don't know. Yes. Um I've spoken with people, a lot of people, if you, you bring that up, something is going on there as well as other parts of the world. Of, and, and a lot of places that have, things have been buried, cultures mm -hmm. have been buried underneath. They were all come like Atlantis. Everything is coming to the surface now, not just physical things coming to the surface, but as you said before, related to people coming mm -hmm. together. And I believe there are more people who are in the positive love than the hate. But when you're talking... You, both of you spoke about fear. Well, they are fearful because I think a majority of people, they're accepting of other people. There's no hate in them. But the bullies who are mm -hmm. from the hate squad over there, uh, people are afraid to fight with them on that. But I believe the, the truth will out. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. must. Mm -hmm. I think it's a law of the universe. And I also believe that uh, memory suppression of any sort doesn't last forever. And uh, certainly the government instituted memory suppression only lasts for 20 years. They've admitted that when they were talking about their exotic programs, that they that 
no memory suppression or memory involvement that they have come up with can last longer than 20 years. And I think that's actually about the same with many of the ET beings who have tried to suppress our conscious memories so that we aren't fearful. I, I, I don't think it's been necessarily a negative process, uh, the memory suppression, but as human beings, we hate it. We're incredibly curious. I, I, think, we're in, I think we're the most curious beings on the planet. And incredibly so. And um, maybe in the galaxy, we're some of the most mm -hmm. curious beings. Who knows? But uh, I, I think memory suppression has been used often uh, in an attempt to make things smoother or easier for the human beings that are really experiencing this duality of ET contact and a physical life uh, in this time-space coordinate where you have to show up. You know, it's uh, what do you think about that, Wes? Do you feel ever any kind of push me, pull you between um, I'm going to just have to call them your two lives? <laughs> um, I, I do periodically and it's going to and I'm going to be redirecting this to Stan because it seems to be a theme of the show, um, which has to do with fear. Uh, I used to feel a lot more um, before hypnosis. Um, I used to be really on the edge, and that's why I first came to see you, uh, because it was affecting my daily life as, as a, you know, a college professor. Um, I have to handle vast quantities of students, material, content, organization, and I was really beginning to resent it. So I, <clears throat> I did have a push-pull uh, back then. As far as a, a, a fear, though, um, uh, I think I stepped through my fear, and I wanted to ask uh, our guest, Dan, um, if, if you've been the target of any, that, any of that kind of uh, criticism, and how did, how did you respond to it? Okay, that's a very good question. I mean, I've had people, including relatives, who wouldn't speak to me. <laughs> you, know, if you know, if you don't walk their walk or think the way they think, then, you know, you're not there. And, you know, and I, it took me a little while to realize that's okay. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong in that because these people who who want you to feel low, then you'll be subservient to them. Basically, I think it's just a matter of control. If they can get you fearful of something, whatever their will is, you will do it. But you're smart enough to know that. And thanks to people like Leslie, who regresses people with that, the truth eventually comes out. One thing I have to say, Leslie, I would hope this would not come up when time and you'd be the first to do that i love to do a regression on an alien being i would hope i fantasize about that they come over there what would you uncover from them because i'm sure they have yeah. suppressed memories also i'm There's sure they do there is it's a whole glorious world out there uh but with you wes i mean because you're in the academia and that <laughs> is one field uh, over there where you know everything has to be proved you know, like this, two and two is four, and there's no gray areas or anything like that. So that's why I give you a lot of credit for you coming out, because I know, you know, from hearing your lecture at the MUFON and other things I've spoken about with you, I, I give you credit for that. You were, you know, like I said, you know, I'm not going to take it anymore. That's where you reached. <laughs> it is. It was a lot like network, I have to tell you. It was a lot <laughs> like network. Um <laughs> And uh, I just want to create a, a couple of touch points, Leslie, for us and, and Stan. So it was the Alien Cosmic Expo uh, mm -hmm. that we were all together at. And we, we sat at the table watching Travis Walton. Yeah. And, uh, and, and since that point, uh, uh, Stan and I and Ray and Anna have gotten together a couple of times. And we've got to know each, each other a little bit better. We stepped across boundaries, all sorts of boundaries to do that. No fear. In fact, mm -hmm. a total pleasure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I say amen to that. I second that. Yeah. Fear is the big paralyzer and the big tool of the bully. And, you know, how, how do you think, you know, and, and I'm only going to make this one tiny political inference. The entire uh, power base of uh, 45, the X-45, was based on 
scaring those poor people south of the Mason-Dixon line who have lived in near poverty and, and have terrible educational systems. And he terrified them into thinking that they were going to lose even more. And it was fear that uh, ran his campaign. And fear and unfortunately people mainly without ample educations to put it all into perspective. Not their fault. Um, the, the southern half of the United States has never recovered from the Civil War. And I don't care how groovy Atlanta looks at night. You know, it's, it's, it's still, we are still dealing with the consequences of, um, of that war. And, uh, and they were, these people were manipulated with fear and continue to be. And it's, it's just very sad. And unfortunately, it's become a, it's established certain neural pathways now with these people where they're unable to perceive the same kind of reality that the rest of us do. Regretfully, you are right. I have to agree with you on what you are saying. And again, we're going with fear and to their own self be true. And these people have to look into their own hearts, to their own soul mm -hmm. saying, I'm something, I'm okay, I'm good, I will make it. But I guess if something is, if you're brainwashed enough about something, it mm -hmm. has an effect on you. And something just came to my mind that hasn't been in my mind for a long time, but going along with what you're saying. Uh, I, I don't know how they do things in Canada, but when I was younger in the schools there, in, 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 there was an auditorium there, and you all sang the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And I, at first, as a little kid, I thought I had a great voice, you know, and I sang. The teacher came afterwards, told me to mouth it. <laughs> you know what it is to tell a little kid to mouth the national anthem? For years after that, even in Groups at camp where people were singing. I mouth it. So, Aww, <laughs> no, they but, told but, you to ghost it. That's a musical tune. They told you yeah. to ghost it. Oh, but but you're the one. Uh, <laughs> let's see, just brought it to my mind. When you says that things are instilled in you, they of course it will affect you. If a parent says, "Okay, mm -hmm. you're nothing. You'll never make it. You that kid will never make it." Yeah. not because they can't do it. It it was they were brainwashed that way. And and not and not nurtured. And when children are not nurtured properly, certain parts of the brain don't even develop correctly. And we now know this from the real time mapping of the brain. And there was even a brilliant article in the Toronto Star this morning about that was speculating on what kind of ch horrible childhoods have these male MAGA uh, supporters had that they have selected Donald Trump as a paternal figure. And that's essentially what's happened here. We are not only looking at undereducated people, but people probably from traumatic childhoods who um, have fixated on their their fearful leader. And um, because he represents an absent the father that isn't there. Well, it's not, I'm getting a little too psychological here. No, I no, I find it fascinating. <laughs> no, no, it's great because I had no idea uh, which direction this would go in because we never discussed anything prior to me being your guest over here. So I love this because I feel like we're at a coffee clutch somewhere. Yeah. And we're just talking. <laughs> coffee and talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alien coffee talk. That's what you <laughs> Decaffeinated. Um, no. Yeah. I oh, wanted to ask, uh, ask you, Stan, um, sure. you've had so many guests uh, like uh, Nori and Kreskin and all, all sorts of fascinating people. Is there Are, are there uh, two or three that really stand out that, that changed you and maybe changed your guests that were spectacular for you? Well, you're you over there. OK, I have to say you are right over there with it too there because when I spoke to you after the expo and also when you were a guest on my show, that was good. You see, like everybody, and I'm sure you find this yourself too there, that everybody has that something special that they mm -hmm. want to say. And I go out with, I'm not from, as the two of you are not, I'm not from the gotcha school. As you know, there are those over there who speak to people very nicely and then they say something to get them. I, I There's no doubt in my mind to Hmm. question people. Are they right? Are they wrong? Did this happen? Did that happen? They feel it happened. It's like if you're on a boat and they're seasick, they say, oh, it's all in your head. No. What I'm doing is the real thing with that there. I would say probably, um, she was it's so difficult. Paul Hellyer was very interesting. Oh, when I, had interviewed oh, I adored him. 
the <laughs> former defense uh, minister in mm. Canada. And mm. up in his 90s, he was he was on that stage the same time you were mm-hmm. uh, at the same thing with Del were there. He was fascinating and I and I learned so many things because I felt for sure because of support, knowing that you know the uh UFOs are as real as the airplanes in the sky that he's known for saying and things like that. We himself told he's he's not a ufologist. He never no. was it as a consider himself. He was an it. economist. He was a, or an economist rather. I mean, he was a, very much into that kind of study. So his whole thing about bringing, you know, the, the bringing the knowledge of the alien component is to cure our failing system. It was all, and he had plans of how to do it, and he just didn't live long enough. Bless his heart. I, I, you know, what what a what a wonderful man, and. You know, Stan, he told me um, not long before he passed, because at that, I don't think he lived very much longer after that particular convention you're talking about. I think he was gone maybe maybe a couple of years. But um, he told me at that time that to his knowledge, there were at least um, 80 different species of of ETs, uh, evolved ETs, that uh, humanoid ETs that the Canadian government had treaties with, detente, open communication, you name it, it was going on. And if it's happening in Canada, it's happening even more in the U.S. because Canada and the U.S. have been in bed over this whole issue forever. What Mm -hmm. about the do line? What about those shared military bases? And that's where a lot of, I have now come to believe that a lot of the, the worst things that I hear about in regressions are things that we do to each other. Um, that have a military component. And I believe that a lot of that has happened um, on the due line, on those military bases that are that are conjointly run by the U.S. and Canada. Still, I think, I'm not sure. Wes, do you know, is that an old relationship or are there still U.S. and Canadian <clears throat> soldiers operating those bases? I, I, I think it's current. I'm not up on it. And, and I'm really glad that that you brought this up too, this collaboration, so to speak, that's to no one's mm-hmm. benefit, but theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, Stan, when you were in the uh, in the military, you served oh, with honors. Yes. Did, did yes. you have any inkling or interest in any of this? Or Okay, from a little child, I always had a fascinating, a fascinated with the unknown. I mean, a great, great grandfather of mine was the court astrologer to Franz Joseph, who's the oh. head of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Oh, so my. I should really be an astrologer, but I'm not. I like astrology, but I don't do astrology with that. So there's always been a fascination with the unknown, what's out there. And talking about Paul Hell yeah, we're going mm. over there. I interviewed him, I think, about three months before he went into spirit. And yes, he believes there's a lot more out there. And what he was hoping for was somebody to carry on after he passed on. That was one of his wishes. He told me that he would like to do that. Somebody else out there does it. But so many people today in power are so afraid of losing their job or what the constituents would say, because well, everything is to be elected again. So we know now, I know it's in the States, probably in Canada too, where, where people are saying outrageous lies, things that are true, and people are afraid to challenge these people mm-hmm. because they've been brainwashed, as you mm-hmm. were saying over there, to believe this is so, that is so. And if you mm-hmm. want to get the vote, you know, you've got to do that. So with the paranormal, yes. I remember uh, there's a public... Samuel Weiser, they're big publishers now in the uh, field uh, mm-hmm. related to this. But when they started off, when I was a kid, they had a, they had a little bookstore in a basement in Greenwich Village in New York mm-hmm. City. And they had all kinds of books there. And I would love to go there, especially uh, when they had books from not necessarily new books, but people, you know, sold out from the house. They were moving and, but they, and you picked up all these books. So I have a I have a whole lot of collector's books from the 1800s, early 1900s, uh, collector's items. And I picked them up like for next to nothing. You know, they to pick it up. You know, they don't have a cover on it. I could yeah. care less about the cover. What's the contents of that? So to answer your specific question, yes, always, always had an interest with it. Mm-hmm. Or as you wish, uh, who have psychic abilities, you have it. Maybe I call it something else, intuitive. But you know something before it happens and you feel it. And then, of course, what you face is there. Do you tell this to somebody 
or you don't, you know, yes. uh, oh. you know, you feel something, you know, you want to tell somebody, you know, this person is no good for you. Forget about them. Don't be with them. Then who are you to get involved? Or maybe things are supposed to play out the way they are. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's very different. And there are always, I, I, I believe there are always various timelines that can be activated. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm not so big on prophecy or people who say this is definitely going to happen. Yes, there are impressions and there are probable timelines. A lot of people, a lot of good psychics picked up on uh, the Twin Towers situation in 9-11. Sometimes things are just going to happen. But other times I think it's possible that psychics pick up probable realities. And so it's all about what we as a consciousness decide to activate and you know the nature of reality is i think quite different than what we have in the past thought and that's another tough one for uh you know for people to get around that that linear time doesn't really exist except as a yardstick for us to use in the in the third density in the physical realm so that we can show up you know we we've got to have it here but it's not the true nature of space-time, which I believe is is layered. Um, I have had clients uh, come to me who have regular contact with beings from a certain place, and I will always say, I will always try to find out where, you know, where do they come from, what part of the gap, but I always try to find these things out. And every once in a while, uh, the evolved being will, you know, through my client, or will say, well, I'm actually actually the planet is very close, but but you can't perceive it. Hmm. So there's also a question of we are looking at a very narrow ribbon of of what creation is because of our our emerging vibration. I'm going to say, you mm-hmm. know, but in reality, we're really talking more about ultra terrestrials. Than extraterrestrials, I, I I believe. Good point. I just like to comment on something you just said, Leslie, about prophecy. You know. Oh yes. Uh, and I have to agree with you t- uh, to a good extent with that. Of course, if anybody ever asks me for reading or something like that, I make sure to tell them you are not born with a compass and a map. You are, you are not you know, and not everything is in stone. When you were born, this is going to happen. You have free will. You can make changes. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So even though I've been involved with a lot of people and organizing shows of people in the field, if somebody says to you, this and this is going to happen and you can't do anything about it, question it, chances are something could be (laughs) happening about it. I know different. Exactly. What's, what's the consequence? You you know you want to go out for a day, picnic, whatever. You turn on the weather forecast. It's like oh, it's going to rain. So you have a few options: stay home, go out, bring an umbrella, go out, don't bring an umbrella, get wet. You always have options. Mm-hmm. And, and in fact, the weather people are pretty good because they usually say, you know, um, you know, chance of or risk of. You know, psychics mm-hmm. can't do that. You know, they're covered either way with that. So I agree with you. If a psychic uh, says to somebody. This is going to happen. Be careful that you don't make that thing happen because yeah. they said it. You know? That's what I love about astrology. You know, now Wes's partner is a master astrologer or a mistress yes, astrologer, Anna. whatever you want to say, Anna. <laughs> and, and a lovely and, girl. Uh, and a lovely girl. Lady. And, you know, astrology seems to me to always be about um, uh, portents, possibilities, good times to do this, that, or the other. You know, it's more about. This is these are the forces that are that are now bubbling and you can make use of that or you can do something else. And, you know, I have never had an astrologer, good astrologer, tell me this is going to happen and you can't do anything about it. You're going to collide with this situation and it's going to screw you up. So that's that's not. uh, So, again, people people are sometimes proceeding with fear. You know, they're afraid to have a reading. I'm sure that uh, people have to, people are afraid to be hypnotized still. Mm-hmm. And hypnosis sure. is 6,000 years old, Stan, 6,000 years old. And it's still too esoteric for most people to understand <laughs> when it has completely been, uh, been um, what's validated by the real time sure. mapping of the brain. There's this is science that's going on here. It's not mysterious. It is science. And 
but we have a very hard time opening our minds to what's new and different because sure. of because of fear, I think. And um, same thing with fear with going back to the psychics. If a psychic says, you know, wants you to be, you know, beholden to them, you know, this is going to happen. But if you pay me X amount of dollars, I like this candle, do this for you or that. You be very cautious about that. Because sometimes when people do go uh, for readings, they're in a vulnerable spot and they could be people taking advantage of it. Oh, yeah. What comes to mind is what going along with what we said over there. Uh, uh, some years ago, we organized the show. This gentleman comes over uh, at the front desk there and uh, he telling me the story there about a nearby psychic, apparently who's very close with his mother. Mother passed over, says, oh, she's in purgatory there. She's oh. crying. She's yelling. Oh. She's so upset there. $20,000, I will release her soul. No. He paid it. I says, why don't you go to the police? He says, I'm ashamed. And this is an intelligent man there too. Go with that. So I think it's very important if people know, I think most people know, and I'm sure your people who watch your show know that too there. Use your own mind and think, you know. Yes, and go with your gut reaction. And don't be fearful because people who are actually involved as professionals and have, uh, they are, they have no problem showing their credentials. My website is up. Everything's on there. You know, people who are where their hearts are in the right place uh, have no problem with uh, being truthful. It's (laughs) exactly. And to people who are being told certain things by people, I think good rule of thumb is a good adage is when in doubt, don't. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Don't say buy this, do that, do that. If you doubt something, there's a reason for it. So pass on it for now. Benny, if it's meant to be, you'll come back to it. Exactly. I would really love to ask you a couple of questions about Kreskin, the amazing Kreskin. Um, I did have the pleasure to meet him several times. I was uh, I was an NBC page for several years and I worked on the Tonight Show. Um, oh, wow. And I and I did. Oh, that's a, that's a book right there. But I did. I did meet him. And he was a very uh, I found him to be a very humble man. But I you know, and he would always say I'm a mentalist. I'm not a psychic. I'm a mentalist. I'm not even sure what that means because the vibe that I got from him is, is that he was very gifted. And uh, how much do you think of what he did was really his own psychic skill set and how much of it was something else? A fusion. I think it's part of the two. I agree with you totally. I mean, you know, you have a guest, you want to be courteous with them, and they're nice, and he's a great person with that there. But he was telling me certain things over there, and I'm inclined to agree with you. Yes, there were certain things that he did that goes under magic or ment- not really that, mentalism, what he does. Uh, he has the gift, but it works for him to say he doesn't, and nobody gets hurt by that. So right. that's okay. But what, what you picked up, I agree with you, Leslie. Yes, mm-hmm. that was yeah. my feeling. Yeah, I think that he uh, I think he freely used his own skill set in there with whatever the other disciplines were that he because he was always uh, never portrayed himself as it was just I'm a mentalist. I've got no abilities. This is this is I can't explain it, but, you know. That's show business. <laughs> that, could, that could avoid some loss. We're going to get you too. a tarot deck, Leslie. <laughs> I have had one since I was 12. Oh, huh, good. Yeah, I, 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 um, I prefer to read the Egyptian tarot, which we believe is the original tarot that it comes, the Book of Tho, it's sometimes called. And uh, it absolutely goes back to ancient Egypt as a divination tool. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Inter- yeah. I have Egyptian cards too. It's interesting. Do That's you really? Story. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. when you talk about uh-huh. Egypt, so many people don't know. Like when we think of something like chakras, you know, balancing the chakras, the energy centers, we always think of, India, and rightfully mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. In, in that it's well known there. They do that people go there. But in research I did on that subject too there, they go back to the ancient Egyptian healing temples thousands yeah. of years ago. They oh. did it. And from yeah. there, they went here, there, there. And then they picked up on it. They got it. But the truth be told, Egypt is where it started. 
absolutely so. And uh, I think we can, uh, it's not too much trouble to think about Egypt as ground zero for the Sumerian civilization and uh, and the fact that there were in fact, um, uh, uh, there were in fact pharaohs who were, had uh, interesting genetic genetics. <laughs> Akhenaten, yes. <laughs> like Akhenaten and uh, and Akhenaten, and, and in fact, even just in our mainstream world, it, it's some interesting things that have happened recently. There have been a number of uh, old kingdom mummies who have been DNA tested, and guess what? They're not Egyptian; they're European by by the factors that we identify European civilizations. So. Uh, they are the the old kingdom pharaohs with the purest blood were something else yeah they i'm sure they weren't just human to, not just no, human no. either we agree we agree totally on that they and were, you know we love to we, they teach us in histories in the schools uh about you know the 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 old world you know this one didn't deal with that one they didn't know about that one i believe there's a lot of Oh man! Between them. You know it. How did all that cocaine get into those mummies? <laughs> I, I ask you. I gotta ask you that. <laughs> cocaine and tobacco. The mummies are filled with Ugh. cocaine and tobacco. There's only one place they could get that: the New World. Medicinal only. Okay. So maybe the term "high priest" has different meanings. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Um, Stan, I, have we feeling, a few... I have a feeling I would have been right in on it. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> High priestess. High priestess. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> um, Stan, we still got a few minutes to go, but sure. I, uh, I, I wanted you to at least now and perhaps before we close, uh, talk about paranormal yakker. Like, how did you <gasps> come? How did you come to do that? And how can people see that? And then we'll revisit it. Okay, well, great. That, I, I will take advantage of that. Thank you for asking that. Okay, I say that I was always been interested in the paranormal. Uh, for seven seasons, again, I was the host of the weekly paranormal show. And I was uh, living in the Niagara Falls. Uh, uh, going on, it was great. And then I moved to Hamilton. And uh, the people in uh, Niagara Falls, they only wanted to deal with people from Niagara Falls. So I was here now. And I love all of this, what's going on over here. So I do it. I realized I had a lot of context and I enjoyed it uh, with it. So we decided to start it up and it just started mushrooming. And so now it's, I, what am I going to be? I'm going to be paranormal yak. I'm, I'm the paranormal yakker. Okay. So if they go to paranormalyakker.com, uh, they could get into my, uh, free YouTube show. Uh, all I got to do is press the subscribe button. And they can also check out all the other people that I've done, uh, who I've interviewed, who's like a who's who. It's yeah. I just, like you, you've got to love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I love the feel. I love everybody, whether they're into haunted houses or UFOs or Bigfoot or whatever it is. And to me, you, you have to do what you enjoy. And at this stage in my life, you know, they say, do do what you love, right? Mm -hmm. I love this. I love the whole feel. I love everything about it. Uh, Wes, when you were my guest, I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Leslie, you'll be my guest one time. Oh, I'd love to. Have an, yeah. You have an important story to tell on that. So, yeah, because I, I think very difficult for somebody to have a show, whatever it is, on something, if it's not in their DNA, if it's mm -hmm. not in them. You've got to love something to do it. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. And when you follow your passion, uh, you know, B B Bashar, the wonderful uh, alien that uh, uh, I hate to use him, call an alien that uh, Derlanka channels, that's Bashar's whole message. When you follow your passion, that's when everything else in your body starts turning on. And that's mm. when you become successful. When you try to do something that is not your passion, it can only go so far. But Agreed. when you follow, when you follow your passion, all kinds of stuff turns on in your brain. It's a, it's a, it's really magic. Yeah. And also going along with what you do with regression, when people follow their passions and find out what's in them, why is this disturbing me? What's that there? I'm sure many of your clients have told you how it opened up a whole new world for them with oh. their real selves. I've come to the show. God willing. That, that is my, that is always my goal because when 
people, by the time people come to me, and most of them come to me in midlife, uh, they have already been through so much confusion and self-doubt and horribly many have been through various psychiatric uh, procedures or processes or medications. Um, it, it's it, my goal is to get them back in touch with who they are and to restore their confidence and their belief in themselves and to, um, and to integrate this wonderful aspect of themselves, integrate it into their mm -hmm. linear third density life. It's possible. We're here because we chose to agree to do this. Mm -hmm. And we, it is possible to have a linear life that helps others and to zip down the rabbit hole. Now, when you say we chose to do this, Leslie, go. I just want to go back to what you were talking about with the Bible was originally, mm. et cetera. Reincarnation was part of that original it was. Bible, but it was. it was taken out. It was thrown out at the Council of Nicaea. Reincarnation, yes. so the same that. sex yes. marriage ceremonies uh, uh, are, are uh, the um, Mary Magdalene who financed Jesus' whole campaign and was his wife, became a prostitute. So all of these things, the editing, I got to tell you, man, the editing was wild. So uh, we, have to, we have to look to other sources to find our history, to recapture our history. And I still believe that Edgar Cayce was spot on and we will find evidence of our Earth, ancient Earth history uh, beneath the paw of the Sphinx. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. But I talk about Edgar Casey. Did you ever go to Virginia Beach, Virginia to visit his? Boy, visit? I never did, but I did have a reading yeah. done remotely. But it's kind of another story because it's pretty wild. But yeah. I, I always had wanted. Were you able to go stand? Oh did yes, you go there? I, I, oh, oh absolutely. And it's like you know, it's incredible. You have people from all over the world, and everything in the archives over there is open to the public. You could go yeah. there. You could spend weeks there. Except one little. Uh, a bit of advice. Winter is not exactly a time to go there. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, it, it's great. All righty. Well, uh, you, we are talking about hypnosis, and, and I'm saying this because of Leslie. Stan, have you? I don't think I ever asked you if you've been hypnotized. No. Uh, Stan probably thinks he can't be hypnotized. No, no, no not at all. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I think when I'm ready for it, you're, you'll remember my go to. All right. Person for yes. that. No, I no, I have not. But it's intriguing, you know, what's going to come up over there. Yeah, there are certain things I think I'd like to know, but like, you know, like everything else, you know, in its time. In its time. Right. When it feels right, you know who to call. Who are you going to call? <laughs> <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> I, uh, I I love Leslie's earlier comments, Dan. Perhaps you could talk about this a little bit. You know, being um, being programmed on the way in. It wasn't until I did my inner life hypnosis session uh, uh -huh. with Leslie that I confirmed, validated that what I thought was true uh, about my fate was true, and that I agreed to all this. Uh, so I don't know if you're uh, familiar with inner life hypnosis or you have a comment or on it. Life between lives, it's yeah. sometimes called. It's the Michael New. It's the new Newtonian uh, addition to past life regression. And it's quite fascinating because it's very specific and it's mm -hmm. very much about what Wes just said, why we chose the parents we chose, why we were born where we were born, why we chose our siblings. And so what I do is I I actually bring someone to their most recent past life, which sometimes hasn't even come up before, but we're only using that as a way to get into the interlife. So I take somebody through their last life and the death experience, and then we're in, I, I don't know if you want to call it heaven or the spiritual realms, but the place where we go before the council and we make decisions and we decide mm -hmm. about our, it, whether or not, and again, it's a universe of free will, whether or not we want to come back in again. And uh, it's fascinating. Yes, I am familiar with Life Between Lives. And I have to thank you, Wes, because you sometime back had mentioned that. And so mm -hmm. I've looked into that. And thanks to learning from you. And the thing is, it makes a lot of sense, what's great. You know, there are different theories out there, but you got to question sometimes, you know, does it make sense? Life Between Lives, that makes a lot of sense. It Perfect. Does. It's super practical. Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't really have much to do. You know, people can very get very caught up in the whole 
past life thing. I don't see people too often if they want to come, you know, if they want to explore further, I make them wait, you know, a few months because people can become uh, obsessed. And the thing is, the this is the most important life. My great teacher, Dr. Georgina Cannon, always stressed that this is the most important life. The other experiences can inform us, but this is fluid. We can make our choices. We don't, we're, you know, this is where it's really happening in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's very good advice. And so many people, you know, regret, you know, well, this was my destiny. I was destined to be this, destined to be that. You're not destined to be anything except what you want to be destined to be. Indeed. And we're not that. even really destined to be with one person unless we are, we were twin souls or have made some super agreement. There are many people we can share our lives with in a given lifetime. You know, many chances, many chances of love and to be loved. Sure. And I'm sure as both wow. of you know, there's uh, there are all different types of soulmates that we can have. Oh, yeah. All different kinds. Your your you know your your sibling can be your soulmate. It's it's or it's, not, yeah, or not, you yeah. know. So yeah, how many people running. say they feel closer to a friend than to a sibling? Yeah, oh, it's very reason. it's very common. You know, I, I it was it took me a while to realize that I'm actually quite unusual because of my super closeness to my siblings, and how blessed I am. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have a clear picture until past twenty years, and so until I started working with people when I realized how rare and wonderful that actually is. That's lovely. <laughs> well, we're running close to showtime, uh, Stan, so we want to get you to uh, tell us again about your website, how people can get in touch. Uh, if you have things coming up you'd like to talk about too, we got, you know, five minutes maybe. Oh, okay. I think I'll take less than that because so, I can't believe how the time went by so quick. Just speaking to two of you, I feel very <laughs> comfortable over here. Oh, all nice. that's missing is maybe a cup of coffee here. <laughs> well, you know, be, being a, being a New Yorker, we have been manipulating time. It actually it feels like it moved faster because it really did because of our perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, valid. I agree yeah. with you totally with that. <laughs> yeah, if they go to paranormal yacker dot com that'll be to our website and they click on subscribe uh and so they'll, every week they'll be we have show different show each week uh with a different guest there so they can uh get free subscription to that plus tap into all the others like paul Helia, who may rest in pieces mm. on the other side now uh on that and uh uh, so, yeah, I'd love for people to subscribe to my show. The more viewers we have, the better, all of us. You, mm -hmm. Same with you, too, there. I like that. And if somebody wants to be on my guest on my show, also, just, you know, let me know. Uh, that's it. Because uh, as, as I speak to the two of you and see how your minds work and how my mind works on that there, too, there, we're all of this in it for the right reason and there are so many people who are in certain jobs and positions including in this field who are not in it for the right reasons and have other motives that are different i know with you is to get to get information get the truth out there you know thank you so it. much for staying thank, Stan, thank you for saying oh, that can... we're we're trying we're doing our best and and so are you and bless your heart for all that you do to uh help people to tell their stories and and wake other people up Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure yakking with the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stan. Thank you. And our usual sign off, Leslie. Remember, we, we are, not are not alone. alone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Good night from Contact TV. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Contact TV. We would like to thank our generous sponsors, Lightwork Hypnosis, Euphoria and the Euphoria Chronicles, Earth Mystery News, Conspiracy Culture Books, MUFON Canada, Free Experiencers, the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Encounters, and Variety Store Productions. For guest booking information, please email Wes Roberts at producer at contacttv.ca. And don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter.